Hey, it's Sunday and we're live! Hey, guess what? It's just the Sky Kid. It's Sunday afternoon here, but Sunday night across the pond. And with us this afternoon evening is Paul from the Scapones. <laughs> Hello and welcome, Paul! Hello, Hello how are you doing? Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for Great. joining us. Uh, what? Oh, it's a pleasure. So to, to start off, uh, I guess introduce us to you. I mean, I know who you are, but those watching at home, um, give yeah. us a rundown of you and who's missing tonight from the Scapones. Well, they're, they're all missing. <laughs> it's really <laughs> I've I, I become some sort of band spokesman, really, because I, I, you know, I've done this sort of stuff in, in another life as a and stuff. So, but, but um, yeah, well, basically, uh, we're a, a British two-tone style ska band, original ska band from the northeast of England. Um, we've become quite well known across the country, and we're getting, we're starting to find our feet internationally, and um, been going since 2013. Um, there's the band's a size of eight, sometimes nine, it depends. Um, but uh, you know it is with scar bands; they're not small. Um, and yeah, it's about, we supported the Specials last year in their 40th anniversary tour. We're supporting Dave Wakely and his beat in on their 40th anniversary tour of the UK next year. It should have been this year, but obviously the COVID-19 has got in the way of that. So um, we've toured the world, not the world, sorry, we've toured the United States last year. Um, yeah. We've, uh, yeah, it was, it was hell of hell of an occasion. It was brilliant. Absolutely loved it. It was uh, a real experience, and uh, we'd like to go back. We're playing Supernova next year, um, so we're looking forward to that as well. So, but we've toured Ireland and Europe, and we've, we're we're looking at Australia for next year. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's exciting stuff, and we've got we're working on our second album. We've had about eight singles out, and a, and a well received first album. So that's that's us. That's a lot. I mean, you guys have done oh, so I, much. I, <laughs> I could keep you going. I could keep you going all night. <laughs> for that. Uh, so, because you said the band varies between eight to nine people, yeah, can yep. you give us a rundown? Because ska bands, like you said, are large because there's so many variants in like the horn right. section. So go through and tell yeah. us what do you, okay. what is the makeup of your band? Right, uh, I'm lead vocals uh, uh, and stuff like that. And then you've got uh, Mark Wilson. He's uh, He's um, uh, the band founder, should I say, and he plays uh, guitar. We've got um, Kev Watson, who plays bass for us. Unfortunately, Kev's actually unable to do the recording and stuff at the moment because he's in lockdown in a further part of the North East due to the COVID thing. They've had tight restrictions placed on, so he can't get out to do anything. Um, yeah, uh, then we've got uh, Steve Cummings on keyboards, who's our, like, our musical director, a bit of a whiz kid. And, and we've got uh, Michael Larkman, who plays drums. Uh, and then we've got um, the big brass section, which is Dave McNiff, who plays trumpet and trombone. We have um, Stephen Brown, who plays tenor sax, alto sax, and he's getting a baritone, so he'll be fully equipped. Uh, and then sometimes we have guests. Um, so we, we sometimes, like I said, we're sometimes nine, but sometimes we have guests. So it all depends what sort of guests we want. Sometimes we have a baritone, sometimes we have another trombone. It, it changes as we go along. Depending on what sort of event we're doing and, and who's free, really. So with your group because you've done yeah. a, a tremendous amount in really a, a small amount of time really yeah, yeah um how tell us how did you come to get the ability to open for the specials and now the beat and um your tour set up over here like who's responsible mm. for doing that and how how's that all work for you guys it's well i'll start with how it's worked it's worked fantastic for us i mean america was um mind-blowing it was real hard work because we played from the played east coast midwest and west coast then flew back from los angeles to new york and did a final gig in brooklyn and it was uh and that was set basically what happened there was we had a we were doing uh, a live gig well, local to where we play in the northeast of england and uh, i don't know if you heard the town of middlesbrough but from middlesbrough and uh uh, uh, they, they, we were doing our title track album, which is quite a, a bouncy thing live and stuff. And uh, the video was put up on the internet, uh, and a guy from America said, "Oh, you know, they don't play that sort of style of ska out here anymore." And I said, "Well, you know, if you want to see it, you know, do something about it. <laughs> Bring us over, you know." Mm -hmm. uh, and he put the wheels in. Yeah, he just basically he put the wheels in motion for that. Gives a few contacts, and um, I had a few contacts on the East Coast, so we all got chatting. 
and we managed to I don't know what we did here, but we managed to put together a two-week tour. It was fantastic. That's awesome. Um, it was. It was brilliant. Uh, and the way we went down as well um, was was brilliant. I think, uh, you know, uh, we, <laughs> people, some of the American people would say, you know, are you from Scotland? Are you from Australia? No, no, no. It's just, <laughs> just a lot. It's just a northern accent, love. That's what it is. Right. <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, so... So America was absolutely fantastic, and that's gone really well for us. And we've just released a split single with the Detroit Rhythm Crew. Uh, uh, without, um, and we've released a split seven-inch vinyl single. So on one side, obviously, you've got the Detroit Rhythm Crew, and then you've got us. Uh, it's, be, it's been released in, in America, uh, and it's just been picked up by Spinning Riot Records in Mexico. Um, so it's, it's getting about. Uh, so that's great. So obviously, we, we, we've seen the rewards from that. Uh, and obviously we've got to come back to Supernova next year. We would have been there uh, this June, just gone. Yeah. Obviously, well, teams put paid to that. So we're coming back to that. Uh, and obviously we'd like to return another uh, do a, <coughs> excuse me, do another tour at some point. Um, as for stuff like splashes and things like that, we've been around since 2013, so we've become very tight. Uh, and and uh, we're well known for our live energetic performances. And... Uh, and you know we like to get in the crowd and get the crowd on the stage, have a bit of mayhem sort of thing, and and that's what we're all known for. Um, and we've become we've become quite tight musicians. And the first album came out and received great reviews in the local uh, in the UK uh, music media and things like that, which helped obviously. Um, and then it went from there really. Uh, and um, we just um, the, with the specials. I mean, I've worked I've worked done a little bit of work with the specials in the past and stuff like that. Uh, and whether it was a reward for running their online fan club a bit, I don't know, whatever. Um, but that's if they wanted to, you know, play a few shows on their tour. And, well, you know, I mean, they're my favourite band of all time. And, and a lot of the lads in the band are a big specials fan, so it was like a dream come true. You know, we were 13 years old buying their records, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was an awesome, awesome occasion and to play in front of six, 7,000 people in the night. It was just, just mind-blowing. Um we were a little, we were a little bit, a little bit like rabbits in headlights, <laughs> but, you know. But it was, a, it was a really great, great experience. And same with the beat, um, we got approached by uh, Dave Wakelin, and who we had previously um, supported him in Newcastle in England. Um, and he came over a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, so he knew of us, and he approached us, and we've got uh, some great dates on the tour, including the closing date, which is in Bristol next year. Um, so, so, and we've also played Madness as well, which is great, you know. So it's been, we've we've done the full house now, sort of thing. So ah, that's amazing. Like yeah, it is. <laughs> we're, I we, mean, have to, we have to pin, we have to pinch ourselves sometimes, seriously. I, I mean, at this at the rate that you are going, Paul, what? <laughs> where do you go from here? What are the goals? Who else do you? Well, want you know, to... the, well, this is it. Goals. I mean, it's. I mean, if we were, if we're all, shall we say. A senior of a senior age <laughs> we're, we're all late 40s early 50s but you know if we're you know if we're 18 and you know and, and and the music business has changed so much nowadays so the opportunities are being picked up by a major label and that, especially with scar bands and things has pretty much waned away it's gone um so it's all diy do it yourself now and we tend to we seem to have mastered the diy approach of how we run our things which we run our own record label we run our own management um, and stuff like that. So um, we're pretty much it's all in house. Um, so our goals. Do you know what it is? We just love doing it. That's it. We just love doing it. We love writing songs. Uh, we're quite a political band, you know. We, um, but we also have some good time numbers and things. But um, we just love to do what we do. We love the recording process. We love the writing process. We love, you know. And when the song does really well, you know, and you can remember it from its early stages when you've got this really rough demo and you put the worst vocal down just as a guide, and you think, oh god. But um, so when you see it all come together. Things like that, they're, they're, that's what cheers us on. And when you do get really good gigs, for us, that's the goals, you know. And if someone says a nice review or someone says a, a, of, a, of a record or a gig or whatever, you know, I see it as job done, really, and, and we, you know, and we just want to entertain people, and that's about it, really. We just want to keep going, doing what we do. I, I'm excited um, mm. that we will eventually get to meet you in person because we'll see you at Supernova next year. Um, you will go, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm there. so stoked. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got tickets and then COVID <laughs> happened and I was like, damn it, 
But I guess I'm thank yeah. I'm thankful, yeah, right? But it can continue yeah. to go on. Yeah, it's, it's the COVID thing's been terrible for everybody, hasn't it? You know, not just not just scar bands or anything like that, or, or scar gigs and that, but you know, music across the world be completely wiped out, and uh, there's no sign of it. I mean, we do we have done a few social distant gigs. We've got one coming up in a couple of weeks, um, and although it's nice to get out on stage, it's um, and it's nice to have people there, but you know, your audiences have gone from two hundred, hundred to 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 thirty. You know, because they had to have in England. I don't know. I don't know it's like in the United States, but in England at the moment, you can have tables with no more than six people on each table, and it's all got to be probably like a meter apart. And you can't dance, you can't sing. It's ridiculous. But um, and this to me, and this to me does not make sense, right? So if we're no, no. if we're all congregating into one space and we're all breathing the same fucking air, what does it's, it matter exactly. if you are singing or dancing? Yeah. I feel like yeah. this is a. Uh, when, when we talk about putting those restrictions into the, uh, I don't know, nomenclature of what this disease is, um, yeah. why are we stripping people of the one thing that actually has shown to bring people together? Why are we getting rid of the arts? What the fuck did we ever do to you, world? No. <laughs> well, the, the, thing, the problem we've got having in, in England at the moment or should I say in that kingdom, is we've got the government making all these decisions, telling us what's this is what's good for us, stuff like that. Then they are breaking the own rules they have set. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a major, major problem. Because it became, then you think, hang on a minute, what the hell's going on here? And then, it, then I'm not a conspiracy theorist of any kind, and I, I, know, I know it's out there and it's lethal, but I'm starting to think, is it some sort of, you know, not just me, quite a few people, you know, it's starting to feel like some sort of control, um, um, some sort of, you know, it's it just, I don't, know, I don't know what's going on, but, um, you know, I mean, in England, uh, we've got, uh, the government have announced, because uh, we've had loads and loads of music venues closed for good, and, you know, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible, right? Uh, and I put it, it'll be the same in the States, you know, the grassroots venue where bands cut the teeth and you get these first experiences and stuff. Um, these and they're lifeblood of, of, of any music scene, and we've, in just in the northeast where I live, We've had three major ones closed, and then another eleven smaller ones closed, and that's just in the last three weeks. Wow! You know, and these are not going to reopen their doors. Now we can't go to these places anymore where we've been going for years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a worrying factor. It really is. And it's a worrying fact, like you just said there, if you could have these sort of, but <laughs> well, again, to, sorry to get a bit political, but while we're all, in England specifically in the states while we're all being sent to work while we're, all our kids are being sent to school right then what, what you know and they're all mixing so what I don't get it I don't get any of it I don't understand you know, it um, either no <laughs> when it came like when things happened you know last March I would say is when the world yeah. started to really be aware which means that we didn't give a fuck about China until how no. many months after so anyways, yeah. that's another issue in and of itself. But, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> but then you've got, you know, people like, okay, if we wanted to really stop this, what we would have said mm. is mm. we have this, since we can make fake money, it would seem like in currency anyway, everybody stay yeah. the fuck home. We're going to pay yeah. everybody's bills. We're going to pay you to yeah. live because we care that yeah. we don't want you dead. And so... Well, this is it. This is it. And I think your government, our government, you know, they, they're there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to look after its citizens and run the country. And they, and as a, as a result of that, they have a duty of care to the citizens in that country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that is what you just, you just hit the nail on the head and look after us. You should have... You know, I don't, I don't know what it's like over, over where you are, but in the United Kingdom, I can't believe that they don't have a fund a pot for emergencies. Right. The, you know, you That's know, poor it could planning. be nuclear inside, <laughs> it could be... Like, like, do you know what I mean? It could be anything. There should be something in place, and they don't have it. Nope. And it has become, I think, very apparent now more than ever that yeah. um, the almighty you know, pound or dollar or whatever <laughs> form of currency yeah. it is that we're, you, you, uh, euros, yeah. whatever it is, is more yeah. important than people. And that, yeah. and so much so that we're getting rid of anything that is human. We want to exhaust yeah. every possible resource 
while making everybody afraid so that big government can come in and control us more. I don't know about that's exactly yeah, about you, exactly but I'm fucking thinking. you know where we live. We've got a, a how I view what's happening currently in the United States with it's not a presidency anymore. It's a circus, as Adam yeah. <laughs> Limo Birch yeah. so <laughs> lovingly put <laughs> into a song. Uh, but yeah. we we have we're watching history repeat itself, and yeah. Germany did this right back yeah. in yeah. the 30s into the 40s. And yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's... Well, we, it's the same here. I mean, they're, they're, they're making laws and shifting. They're now take, uh, sacking people from the civil service who are supposed to be impartial, and they're putting their own people in. They want to put their own people in the BBC. And, you know, and these are... The, and, and these... It's becoming a dictatorship in this country. That's yeah. the way it's going. And it's done in front of people who are just taking no noise. And before it's... You know, and it'll be too late. It'll be too late, and they'll have complete and utter control. You know? And and how do we um, change that, Paul? Like, what can we do? As, because I feel like the music industry, all right, who has suffered significantly from this, is trying to at least stay afloat by taking care of its own. I feel like yes. I've, I've watched the music industry, musicians, and despite genre, like, yeah. form more, it would almost seem like, unions to take care of yeah. each other so what's the resolution how the, do we do that this is it this is the tough question isn't it but i mean like you just said there if that's what battle if that's what uh, different genres are starting to do and then you know maybe you you know no one else is going to look after us then we maybe we do have to look after ourselves uh and and that means pulling pulling together across the board you know um uh, i mean the good thing is this sort of situation as it does anything any sort of crisis I mean, we've written some pretty good hard-hitting lyrics. We've already got songs from them, you know. Right. And uh, we, we have one song which is called Tory, which, of course, is the government in this, in this country. Uh, and it's very sweary. <laughs> but, you know, it's how angry we are. And I, when we do it live, I just have to do it. I love to do it live, you know. And But, it, but you know, it's having to... Do, but obviously, we can't do it as live as we used to, you know. Uh, so before that, you could go to all the major cities and, and be singing this song and sort of like reiterating your point across. Maybe, maybe you wake up one person, maybe one person thinks about it. I don't know, mm -hmm. but you know, um, I, I will expect that for across the board. Though I do think you'll get some fantastic material and fantastic work come out of all this. That's what that's what I think. I do think that that's starting to happen. Like a lot of bands mm -hmm. that we've talked to this year they have really hit it into high gear into writing and producing and yeah. cuz they have time to do it because they're right. they're That's not right. out touring so what has been the positives for you guys tell us about during you know this past year mm -hmm. what you've been doing and creating and have out there <laughs> Well, it's been it's been it's been uh, we started off the year really well on, on the on the road and stuff like that and uh and our last proper gig was back in March, actually, just before the lockdown in England. Um, it was in Edinburgh. Uh, and again, it finished on a high, really, so that was pretty good. But, you know, we've, we, we've been writing the second album and we've been recording demos and we've been, so we've been lucky to be able to get into the studio, um, which only just reopened. Um, so we've been, um, we've kept, we've sort of kept ourselves busy, but we've also joined the, the streaming side of things as well. Um, we contributed a new video, like the COVID edition, one of our tracks that I sent you, the one it's gone, it's gone. We, 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 um, we had that played at the Supernova online, um, event for Alpha Boys School. Uh, uh, and so for that, so it's, 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 we've kept, we try to keep things together because the thing is as well, excuse me, is that, um, a lot of bands are losing their profile. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, because they're not seen as much. So, and, and I understand people are getting down and stuff like that. Um, and, and I understand it completely. Um, but it's the thought, it's the, it's the idea of keeping our profile up that has kept me pretty much taking over and keeping sane, really. Um, and same with the other guys, you know, so when we've been doing these little streaming things, you know, they've all been filming isolated at home, but it gives them something to do. It makes them feel as if they're contributing and, and, uh, it makes them feel as if, you know, it's it's a little bit of normality, shall we call it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, and so basically that's what we've been doing. We've been doing all that sort of thing and uh, hitting, um, we've been doing live streams on our own, um, our own Facebook page. Um, not of, of, of 
a live stream probably just records but we, you know I'm just getting used to the technology to be honest because it's all new isn't it yeah. you know we're all trying to embrace this thing and then work out what's going on uh, and we've been we've, we've taken part in a lot of online festivals with things and stuff. so it's it's been nice it's been nice and stuff but just you know for me personally and and, um, and ska music in general ska music in general is you know, you can have any band record a record, but for me, it's the live experience. Ska music should be experienced live, and 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 it's a form of um, of great, you know, music. Music is a form of great expression, and playing live is a complete sort of uh, extension of that. And um, and I miss that. I miss that so much. I really do. You know. So you know, you said you guys are in the works now of creating this second album, and that your studio yeah. just reopened. So how, tell us about the recording process for you guys, because you did mm -hmm. mention it's all do it yourselves. When you guys go into mm -hmm. the studio, is it one of your, like one of you guys recording, mix mastering? Do you work in partnership <laughs> with someone? Tell us about that process. Well, yeah, well, I mean, this is the bit, I, I, this is the sort of thing I love. I love the whole, the whole, it's like giving birth. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know. Well, I do know, do you know? You. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but but uh, but yeah. So you know what we do is at the moment because the the way we do still have COVID restrictions in the studio. So instead of seven of us being in the studio sat around on the couches, it now has to be three in there. So we do shifts, we're in and out and stuff like that. So but what we do is you know basically we record a demo at home. We send the demo around to the lads. They get their notation or chord progression, whatever it is they need. Um, and so that I sometimes put a guide vocal down, uh, and then. We'll listen to that for a bit and we'll say, right, okay, this is the date we're going in. So we go in. We have a wonderful engineer called Chris Davison. Chris is uh, a great artist in his own right. Um, and uh, um, I can't remember what the guy's name is, but he supported the guy who did the music for The Lost Boys. You know the film The Lost Boys? Yeah. Um, he, he supported the guy in England last year and he came on his tour. So Chris is, is an actual genius. Um, so basically what we tend to do is it's always the rhythms first, so we get the drums done. Um, we, what we've done this time around, because we're a bit more experienced and we know we're now way around things a little bit more. So we go in and what we'll say is, right, okay, here's seven songs, let's do seven rhythm tracks. So it's uh, drums get down first and then the bass, and then we tend to move on to Mark will do the guitar, his offbeat chops and stuff first, uh, and then he'll do any extra guitar bits. Uh, and then it will be that we get straight made, it'll be the brass, uh, and then you've uh, the brass, it will be trumpet, trombone, and saxophone. Uh, and uh, the, the, them, the, them boys are, are proper musicians, as I call them. <laughs> you know, if you show me a lot of sheet of music, I go, what's that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a singer, I don't need to know that. <laughs> but, uh, but, so, but these guys are really good. Um, so they, they're pretty efficient. They can go in and it doesn't take many takes to get what they need to do. So they can be done in a, within an early evening, you know, during a couple of hours. Um, so then it's, uh, then it's keyboards. Uh, and then the final thing we do is um, vocals, which means I'll go in, I'll lay down the main, the main vocal, uh, and the guy who does backing vocals for me, Steve, would play keyboards great with harmonies and fantastic we work well together um so it's great hearing it come and steve has got such a great range you know he does lows and highs and he's he's very clever what he does so you know and also when you hear it back even in a rough version you think, wow that sounds brilliant uh, and then what we do is once we've got all the stems recorded uh, which we record in darlington at the forum music center studio one um of where we, because we're based in darlington which is sort of in between uh york and newcastle for anybody knows the northeast of england um so, and then uh, when we've got the stems, we send down to our friend, the Tinker Man, that's his nickname. He's, he's called Paul Ayres, really, but the Tinker Man suits him. <laughs> Let's the tinker around with things. So, but he's, a, he's an absolute genius. Paul's got a massive amount of experience in recording and his work for the BBC and, uh, and things like that. So he's got, a, and he's, He's a, bit, he's a bit of a soul man himself, but he, he knows he has a template for us, knows what we're all about, and he does some wonderful things uh, with, with the, the stuff we do. Um, in fact, we've just recorded a song this week, um, a cover for, it's just a cover song for a charity album uh, that covers the glam rock in England. And, uh, and so we were happy with that, and he sent it straight. I mean, no, that's a song completely recorded on Tuesday, mixed by Sunday, done. You know, it's brilliant, it's wow. a great experience. So yeah, you know, and uh, so that's what we do, and, and uh, you know, and but while that's all going on, we're still all writing in the background. And the good thing is, 
and, and I really and when we first started out, it was really um, the um, guitarist Mark and myself doing lyrics and, and stuff like that. But now it's spread out to a lot of the band, and a lot of the bands are all putting their own, writing their own songs and coming with their own ideas, which is fantastic because we get twice as amount of working. Um, it does have its problems because you've got to work out what's what, but you know, we tend to say, well, that's going to be that's going to be an album track, that'll be an album track, that'll be a single, that'll be a title track, and we work around that and stuff like that. But we're very we're very proud of where we come from. We're very proud of the north, the north of England. And um, there's a big south, uh, north south divide in this country. Mm. Uh, very proud of where we come from. Uh, and the second album is going to be called Northern Gods, um, uh, which is nothing, nothing major, but it's basically a, it's, it's it's a political thing about coal mining industry. And uh, the front cover has actually got um, the, the I don't know if you guys know that, but there was a, a march from the northeast of England in the 30s from Jarrow to London about. Um, protesting against the closure of mines and stuff like that so wow. and working condition uh, and that picture there from the 1930s is going to be the front cover and it looks but we've, we've tinkered around with it put fillers on it to make it look a bit more eclectic um so it's going to be yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's a great thing but um, you know um a while we've been in lockdown and mark said to me the other day you know well I've, i'm halfway through possibly writing album three this is a good thing about it like you say wow. cause people have the time now yeah you know so with that, once you're done recording and everything's where it should be, do you guys yep. get back the finished product to then distribute the way you want to? And then do you go through a distributor? But you are your own record label, yeah? Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, we get the we get the they get the uh, we get the high quality uh, wave file back of and, uh, and the high quality MP3, and then basically it all depends on what we want to do. Obviously, if you want to release something on vinyl, on CD, or as a download, it's a different um, level and standard of recording of, of um, format you get back. You know, it needs to be different. Like there, there is a, a mastering process for vinyl. There's a mastering process for CD and things like that. So it all has to be right. You get all these back. Uh, what I do, and the easiest thing to do, is what we just host it through CD Baby, which is obviously you'll know it's an American site and um, and stuff like that. So, uh, and basically, once you've done that and you've paid your money, you know they distribute it all for you and collect the money for it and then pay you every month. You don't have to worry about it. That's on the download side of things. If we do uh, vinyl or a CD or anything like that, uh, we have to we do that ourselves. Uh, we have somebody we use regularly. Uh, and the distribution is done by ourselves, and it's it's, it's a, it can be a bit <laughs> it's a bit of a drag sometimes to be honest, you know, because you know we you know you, you can be sat online packing and things like that, you know, you can, you've got to get all the dresses, you go, it's, it's but it's worth it, you know, because these people take out the time to, to buy your music and you want to share the love with them, so it means nothing, but it's just a small little thing we have to do, you know. How did you come about creating your own record label, and is it just? You did that so you could keep things in house, or do you have other bands that are featured on your record label? Yeah, well, the, 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 we take our our ethos really from the Two Tone record label, where Two Tone, um, when it first started in the seventies, you know, had it, had brought other bands in into its roster who probably wouldn't have got a record deal anywhere else. Um, and what we so yeah, it is partly to keep it in house and keep control and stuff like that because. You know, we've become because because success and stuff like that breeds breeds this thing where you be, you be your imagery and artwork. We uh, we've got a fantastic guy who does our art. He's called Dave Moran. Uh, I'll give him a big shout. Out. Um, are you up York, okay, lad? I know you're listening, but <laughs> he uh, he's fantastic in his artwork and it's become very very striking and stuff like. You know, people are having his artwork tattooed. You know, I, mean, I don't know what it feels like for him, but when we see a band logo tattooed on people's skin, it's it's, it's the biggest buzz you can get, you know, because that's it. It's, it's permanent, really. Um, so, but so uh, yeah, so and um, so you, you, become, you become like it becomes almost a brand, really. You become almost a brand. I don't know, not, you know, only on a small scale, but it is still that sort of thing, and you have to run it like that. So we do like to have the control of that, not give that off to anybody else, because that might not be how we want it to go. But. Um, yeah, the record level and stuff, yeah, it was best to keep it in the house. But what we want to do is, um, when we get the time, shall we say, is look around our local area for small up-and-coming bands and stuff, you know, be able to put out stuff for them. And, and uh, um, if they're struggling to, to get release, uh, a place to release stuff, then, you know, that's the thing we'll do is support local bands. What is the local scene like? So prior to COVID, all right, what, yeah, yeah. give us some insight as to... How often were you touring and like the area radius 
that you were touring within and playing out and what is the local scene there? The, the locus in the northeast, like biggest like England at the moment, um, ever since, realistically since the specials first came back to tour their their thirtieth anniversary, which is what two thousand nine, there's been a massive boom ever since then. It's never really gone away. Um, in England, I, I, uh, you could probably do a Sky gig every night a week at some points. Um, um, so you know, it, it's been it's it's been very very busy. And for us this year, we were booked out every weekend from January right until New Year's Eve this year. So we were working all the way through. Wow. Non-stop. Yeah, non-stop. And sometimes, you know, you'd be working, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, it, it can be like that. And that's not just in one place. You know, we tour the UK. You know, we go from Scotland. We go down to, to the South Coast. You know, we, we tour up and down the country and from north from, and from east to west, you know, uh, playing festivals and stuff. Um, we have a nice following in the northeast of here, which is great. Um, but because we've, we've done quite well and stuff, we're pretty much well known across the country now, you know, and uh, we have... Um, over 20, I think it's ridiculous, it's something like 23,000 followers on Facebook, you know, um, mm-hmm. it's great, uh, it's an amazing thing. Um, so, um, we're, the word's getting out there, because coming to America as well was such a, uh, an injection for us as well, because um, it's, you know, we're doing, we've been made a lot of American friends, a lot of American fans, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I really, 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 really appreciate that, you know, because um, it's sort of very special. It's sort of very special, you know, when you sit in your bedroom and you're writing songs out, you know, and uh, stuff like that. If you're writing a song at 1 a.m., you know, and it's a dark song and stuff like that, you know, uh, and then people are up there, next, you know, a few months down the line, people are buying it and talking about it, and then, you know, you think, wow, you know, this is, a, this is the creation process, as we say, is an amazing thing, and uh, I'll always be grateful for that. I'm sure the lads in the band are the same. So, I, I love first and second wave ska. You know, original ska and two-tone were things that were really clung to me because when I first started to hear about ska as a young human being, in it was the 90s in the U.S., yeah. and there was a huge yeah. third-wave boom, right? Um, yeah, yeah. For you, is the U.K. more predominantly one scene or another? Um, and have you noticed as you tour that it would seem that certain areas cling to a wave of ska mm-hmm. than another? Yeah, it can happen. It can happen. Um, I know we've got big, like a good ska core scene here and ska punk scene here um, and stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's, it's it, the whole thing that the two, you know, it's original ska, two-tone ska, um, and, you know, and we have, we get the bands, like we get the toasters over here a lot and things like that, you know, real big mm-hmm. fish and stuff. Um, and they can all, you know, they can they all, they all play to good houses and stuff like that. So obviously... It, and the two zone thing, and then you've got the, and there's a lot of bands that in in the nineties in England, there's a lot. Uh, the scene went really underground, but it was still very big. And there's a lot of bands like the Loafers and the Hot Knives and I the Delta Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but stuff like that. But there, you know, and, and the bands that that have gone on, have gone on from them. Then you've got the Specials have come back, Selector come back, the Beat have come back, and, and stuff like that. And, and it's just it's fed, it's drip fed to everything. So. And then from that, you get a lot of offshoots of other different types of bands. It's, it's amazing. The whole, all the all the genres you can think of of ska and stuff like that, including original reggae sounds and rock stellings, are all here on this, on this island. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I don't think any area... There are the, There's certain groups of people who prefer one thing, but we all go to the different types of gigs. So um, it's a, probably right across the board, and, and that's a good thing, you know, because I don't think, although we play a certain style of two-tones, we base our, our own personal sound on, on two-tone, uh, but we, we're, we're not just entirely two-tone. We've got this northern thing about us, you know, and that, well, I think that's what makes us stand out a little bit is because we're very northern as well, you know. I remember, <laughs> I remember being in the United States last year that I was talking, between the song and this guy says, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was great. It was, it was good banter. It was good banter. Well, but, I can um, understand what you're saying. I, I do have, I will admit <laughs> this, um, my ethnocentrism a little bit because I was like having anxiety. I'm like, he's from the North. It might be really hard to understand him. And I hope that I can. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying my best not to speak 100 miles an hour because I tend to run, run faster in my mouth sometimes. So well, I'm trying not to. We're following just fine so far. We're good. Good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so why, Paul, two-tone? Yeah. And yeah. what got you into ska? 
Oh, well, this is what I love to talk about. Um, for me, it was... I mean, I've always been into music. I mean, I remember buying my first record when I was about six. I think it was... Um, I think it was the Bass City Rollers or something like that, a bit of glam rock from the 70s. But um, I was... I, when Two Tone came out in 79, it hit me at the absolute perfect age because I was 13. So I was really starting to get into music seriously, you know, seriously. And I can still remember this day. I remember sitting, sitting at home and we had a, a local TV programme and the specials were on doing gangsters and I just looked up and I thought, what the hell is this? This is, this is, this is just something different, this. And literally, you know, people say, you know, and I've stuck, and I've stuck with it. I've never, there's all my life, you know, I'm... 50, what, early 50s, I'll say. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, and it's still with me now. And I couldn't really tell you what it is, but whatever it is, that hypnotic offbeat, I don't know what it is, but it, it, something clambers inside you and it stays all of you. And uh, so for me, 79 was was the birth of it all, you know. And uh, it was a very, quite a, a tough time in England at that moment and stuff. And the right wing and the National Front and the British movement were, were gaining um, popularity and stuff. And, mm-hmm. then, you know, there was the SUS laws in England, which was the stop and search, where the the, uh, the black communities were getting stopped all the time by the police. And it was it was, it was rough old times. And, and Tutum came along at a time when it was so needed. Um, preaching, obviously, you know, um, well, preaching is not the right word, but, um, you know, talking about racial unity. You know, they had two black guys in the band, uh, they knew exactly what they were talking about. They were confident, and you know they were hard hitting. And the one thing I liked about the specials was their edge. You know, I liked that the menace. The, yeah, out of all the two tone bands for me, they they've always got the menace, and uh, they were you know just so sharp and and you know basically they didn't give a fuck. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Didn't. They didn't give a fuck. And uh, and that's then that's as a thirteen year old, I thought, wow, this is just amazing, just absolutely amazing. So of course, you know, I shaved my head, got me Doc Martin boots, got a hand and jacket, and 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 you know. And I became a skinhead for about, well, I still am a skinhead at heart, but, I, you know, I, I wore skinhead clothing right up right up to, into the early 2000s, you know, and stuff, so, um, and, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, for me, that's how it, it's never, it's never gone away, you know, but you know, the specials, the beat, madness, like, to all that sort of thing, but I've also followed the whole scene all the way through, so, you know, into the 80s, into the 90s, uh, and then, of course, it was a barren piece in between sort of mid-80s where there was nothing going on in England, of course. So when the Untouchables landed, and you, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. the Untouchables from LA, you know, I was like, get in, what's this? This is brilliant. And, you know, they're still one of my favourite American bands of all time yeah. uh, and stuff like that. Um, we maybe, we maybe, fingers crossed, maybe, this is this is exclusive for you, right? All right. Maybe. We might be touring with them in the United Kingdom next year. Dude. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, nobody knew that until now. <laughs> you heard it here first, and that's why you gotta watch the show so you get all of the yeah. hard hitting new news. The new news, <laughs> the brand yeah. new so, uh, yeah. news. <laughs> yeah, it is great, you know. And, and again, for me, it's another dream come true because you know, I absolutely adore the intelligence. They're brilliant, you know. So, you also said that you're trying to like hopefully go to Australia. Yeah, well, we've got contacts out there and friends and stuff like that. We're desperate for us to go over. Um, it's obviously a, a logistical nightmare. Right. Um, it's, it's from here. It's uh, you know, it's a twenty-four hours journey by we, flight. Right. Um, and several stops yeah. along the way. I'm guessing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I mean, I know a couple of guys have done it in two. They've, they've flown to Dubai and changed to Dubai and then gone straight across to Australia. They said they wouldn't do it again. <laughs> right, because so, you're flying across <laughs> that ocean. That you're flying across the Pacific for hours. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I went to Hawaii okay. and it was a, a non-stop yeah. flight <clears throat> from Chicago to Honolulu was nine <laughs> straight hours. And because you're oh, going, you're gaining time. You're really like traveling <laughs> fa- like farther. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we found that very strange. When we to the United States. You know, we know, we know, we know people have been on holidays and places and things like that. I've never been to the States, so you move from East Coast to Midwest to West Coast. I was, I was like, what time is it? <laughs> can, can I call the wife? Can I, can, can I speak to the kids? What is it? Are you in bed? You know, it was very strange. You know, she was texting me at four o'clock in the afternoon saying, I'm going to bed, darling. And I was like, what? What's she about? You know, it's four, four, yeah, four, you know, it's in Los Angeles or whatever. Right. But, um, and when I, was go- when I was going to bed, she was getting up and going and, and taking the kids to school, you know. Yeah. And how does that work? Being. Um... It's crazy. Having 
support from family is ultimately yeah. what makes bands continue to be successful. Oh, God. So Absolutely. Yeah. talk about that as a father and as a partner. How, yeah. how does it work being able to logistically go play, maintain a band, and have support from your family? Well, you know, I, I've said this a few times, and I, and I firmly believe that without the support of family, there's just no options. You can't do it. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You know, if... Um, you know, because because we're so busy, it can affect looking for a holiday. You know, right. um, funny enough, she was looking at a holiday tonight, and uh, she says, "Oh, what about the twenty sixth of June next year? Got a gig." <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's up for next year. But I was, you know, well, it didn't go down too well. But but that is one of the just small problems of that. But yeah, it's it's amazing because my, my wife's wonderful, and uh, and uh, and uh, the rest of the bands have got very very. Um, patient uh, partners and things like that but without that you are lost you, you're completely lost and um, um, you, they, you know you just hope they've got to believe in what you're doing and obviously they must do and that's why let's get on with it Mary because it's a bit nice because I mean I'm a bit of a home bird and stuff like that and we were away for about 18 19 days uh, and I have to admit by the time we got to the last gig I was excited one for the gig but two because I was going on <laughs> you know right. and that's just the way it is you know I miss my wife and I wish my kids you know there's nothing wrong with that um, uh, and sometimes she comes. Sometimes she'll come with or, or travel with us. And uh, we used to get my young boy. He used to come on stage and play a tambourine. But he's a bit of an age now. Where he's a bit self conscious now, so he doesn't do it anymore, which is a shame. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we can't awesome. keep our but, damn kids off a of stage. Anytime we go to a show, I have to <laughs> remind them that not everybody is their dad's band, and we have to <laughs> not be on stage with them. So. <laughs> Yeah. It does, it's you know, great, we, yeah. we both, Kiff and I both have been in bands and been on stage and taken our kids yeah. and trying to pull them off of stage when it's not, <laughs> your gig is like, yeah. get off the stage, kid. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Basically, um, you know, but like you said, we, we encourage people on stage and stuff like that. We, we, you know, some of the stage managers look at you with frowns and, you know, that'd be all right, you'd be all right, you know. And, but, you know, they're looking at their uh, risk assessment register right. on, on there. So, <laughs> get off, get off! Please you know. don't die up here. Yep. <laughs> we don't have the insurance. I'm going, it's all right. No one's going to die. It's all right. Right. If but, you fall, um, we totally are cool with it. We'll fix it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll sort it. Don't worry. How? how no, it's, 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 you know, support is, is is vital. Without support, we can't do it. Simple as. How? I mean, being a band dad. Um, yeah. Do you like? Now that your kids are of you know older ages mm -hmm. and such things, are they also looking at you as an example and want like? Do they branch out and want to do their own music? Well, I've never, I've never been one for um, forcing um, that sort of thing on children and stuff like that. If they want to make that decision, that's up to them. I'll listen to what I want to listen to. But you know, um, I've got three older kids, and and uh, the same with them. You know, they they my my oldest is now thirty, and he listens to Jimi Hendrix and and Cream and stuff in the sixties. You know, I've got a, a lad who's in his mid twenties, and he listens to indie and stuff like that. Um, and um, my daughter here is 16, she's uh, into, um, I don't know if you get it over there, but we over here we've got this thing of teens with guitars and stuff like that, I don't know what you call it, I don't even know what the music described as, but she's into all that sort of thing and she's learned to play guitar and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it's nice to see that happening and, and I, I try and push that side of it. You know, I wouldn't push, obviously, what I listen to, oh, you've got to beat the sky or anything like that, I wouldn't do that because it's just not what I do. But... Um, yeah, I think this, I mean, half the time, I think just look upon me as an embarrassment, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's just yeah. my dad. Oh, they they're allowed to do that. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, God, look again. Look at him. Look what he's doing now. <laughs> he's on, I've been on telly a few times. Going, oh, God, he's on the telly again. You know? <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure that they're also. I think that's like a proud embarrassment, you know? Like, yeah. our kids think it's cool, but also they're like, oh, that's my dad, you know? Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, well done. Yeah, that's what it is. So how about we talk about merchandise? What Ooh, yeah. What merchandise do you guys have? Where is it available? How can uh -huh. people who are listening today support you? 
Great, well, that's a great thing. Uh, merchandise, we're very strong on the merchandise front. We have pretty much covered the lot. We've got uh, a fantastic array of T-shirts and hoodies of different kinds, multi uh, high contrast colour hoodies or plain hoodies. Uh, T-shirts of every different design we've got um, based around our own logo. And we've got, um, obviously, the name the Scapones it comes from Scar and Capones, obviously, because you have an American band called Scapone from Chicago. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and... and uh, <laughs> Um, so our our logo is actually a, a sort of two-tone looking Al Capone. It's pretty good if you check it out on our website and stuff. It, it, it's great. We call we just call him Al. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So he's on everything. But we've got obviously our, our if you go to um, www.thescapones.co.uk slash store. It's all there. Uh, the album files there. The CDs there. There are downloads available on there. The, the t-shirts, the hoodies, we've also got the stickers, we've got badges, metal badges, pin badges, patches. Remember the saw on patches, we've got all that sort of thing. Um, and we've just released uh, a retro version of the first album with added track, bonus tracks, on cassette, which has gone mad. I couldn't believe it. Cassette is coming on cassette. back hard. On like, cassette. Everybody loves vinyl, but cassette now has become like that hot yeah. merch item that people are like, look at, yeah. I got a cassette. I'm like, yeah, do you have the pencil to wind it when the fucking tape comes out? <laughs> well, the funniest, thing is, the funniest thing is we've started giving it, when we send them out, we send them out with a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> For the win! <laughs> if you look at our website, you'll see, we call it a free maintenance tool. <laughs> Oh, I love it. That is wonderful. How? So, yeah. How did so you we guys... So, we've got that. We've got... Sorry, go on. No, you keep going. Oh, yeah. Well, so basically, yeah, we've got that. So, the cassette, I mean, it was, I mean, we we do a lot of vinyl now as well, which is great. Um, and vinyl, like you say, is very popular. Um, I'm a big vinyl fan myself. Um, so... But um, yeah, it's it's we're very very surprised at this, the cassette. The cassette's almost sold out. It's taken us by storm. We just, we just were like, what? What is this? But uh, we just thought it was something gimmicky, you know. Um, let's get a cassette. Let's just let's go old school, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been wonderful. Uh, and we're always and we're always looking to do different things. We may do something on a USB stick. We may do, um, you know. Just, there's so many different things coming in now. It, it's it's uh, tech. This is where I like. Normally I complain about technology, but I'm talking to you over Messenger and stuff like that. So there's one thing that's working. <laughs> that's a good start. Right. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. And then you know, and technology when it comes to recording and stuff like that, and, and making uh, your own merchandise stuff is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, and uh, of course we've got a great art guy. He make you know we get excited about being able to do things with his art as well. You know so. Good. Yeah, so www.thescapones.co.uk slash store. And I'll say it now, but not that you will do, but you can get it at gigs. <laughs> whether, whether or not that will happen again or not for a while, I don't know. But normally we, we take it all to gigs in a big bin suitcase. So. Well, I mean, like, hopefully, fingers crossed, at Supernova, right? You'll have merch. Yeah. So. We'll make sure. We'll make sure we have, yeah. Right. <laughs> come and see it. Just come and see it. I'll be some T-shirts, don't worry. Hey, so that that leads me to when you go and you travel across yeah. anywhere now, yeah. are you how does that work as far as logistics? As a band, do you guys just go travel and hope that you have a co-op of the musicians here <laughs> that you've booked with who will share equipment <laughs> and like do you do you mail out your merch first so that it is stateside or wherever you're going to be and then yeah. you, you, it makes travel easier or how how does that work well that's a very that's a good thing i mean it all depends on where you're traveling we traveled we played uh, last year we played in poland in eastern europe um and of course we were at, the, at that time england uh, sorry britain united kingdom was a member of the eu we could yeah. just take merchandise across there was no there's nothing stick in a suitcase with it through as an extra suitcase it was that easy and obviously we're now out of that and that's completely gone the whole thing is going to be expensive um, we're not even looking at that yet, not even worrying about it. So what I may do in future is if we are going to Europe, I may look at getting it produced in Europe to be picked up whenever we're going to play. I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Right. Um, in the United States, yeah, um, I'm sure you know uh, Lady Hatchet from the Scotch Bonnets. Yes. Um, yeah, she did our merchandise. Oh! <laughs> we came to the States, she did our T-shirts. Fantastic job, yeah. So um, when we turned up in America, they were in a box. It was great, just 
ferreting it about and stuff like that, um, talking to shows and stuff like that. So, but what we do is normally, if, when it comes to like logistical stuff, is if we're playing local, northeast, um, the northeast not that very. It's, it's you know from where we are to Scotland is three hours, so it's on by road, uh, which is not a lot for you guys and all that. But um, uh, so it's not that big a place, so we can all car share and stuff like that. But sometimes, um, look what we have over here: a lot of venues that don't even have their own PA system. So what we have to do is take our own. We do own our own equipment. We've got a full PA system and we have um, everything. We have everything. Monitors the lot, sound desk the lot. Um, it's all done on digital uh, screens now anyway, you know. Um, so we, when we take a big vehicle for that, we charge a little bit extra for, for the use of that. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's only for the place to have a PA. We don't mind doing that. It's fine. Because um, <clears throat> we just want to play, you know. And uh, so, But what we do is... Um, we tend to have there's a guy in Sunderland uh, on the coast here. He has a he's called uh, Band for Vans, uh, Vans for Band. That's it, Vans for Bands. That's it. Uh, he supplies tour buses to like the big punk bands like the uh, Angelic Upstarts, the Cockney Rejects, and people like that in England and stuff. And uh, so we use this. <laughs> and we bands with too. Yeah, yeah. So you get these vans, they've got tables in, playstations, it's just fantastic and, and it's um, cheap and we just we just chipping a bit of money towards it, you know, it doesn't it's not really that expensive. Um and stuff like that. Uh and but when we play like festivals abroad, stuff like, you know, trips we sometimes go across the sea to Ireland and places like that. No, you know, you get all your you get all everything paid for you that way and it's fantastic and it's good. Um, when we did the American tour we did a, a small crowd fund to see if we could get money towards fairs and stuff like that and uh, we we, we raised about a thousand pounds, which was fantastic and wonderful, and people got something from that. Um, uh, so you, you know, I mean, the Scar community I find is is, is one of the one of the greatest communities there is. You know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't know about other music genres, but working man, I've been around the Scar community for about forty years, so I know exactly what it's like. And in England, it's fantastic, and they're very very supportive of what we do. And, and uh, with, again, it's a, it all boils down. We're just on about family support. It's it's easy support is across the board, and that's from people and, and supporters and fans and who follow you. You know, when people come to a gig uh, that's three hundred miles away from you, where they live to see you, um, and so that's a, again, it's a wonderful thing. You know, it has to be, um, and it, we, we never forget things like that because uh, you know we, we just always. Re- Never forget where you come from, basically. You know, don't don't forget your roots, and that's why we, we try and stick to our roots as much as we, as we can. You know. With that being said, Paul, where can mm-hmm. people like where do you want to direct traffic today for those who are watching and viewing? Um, where mm. online are you, and what platform do you want folks to utilize so that you guys are <laughs> recognized? All of them. <laughs> but, uh, we, um, so you've got www.thescapones.co.uk. That's the main website on, 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 on the web. We're also across major social medias. Um, I'm still finding around a lot of stuff, but we're on Twitter, which is uh, twitter.com slash Capones. We're on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash The Scapones. Instagram, which is instagram.com slash The Scapones. Uh, we're on Bandcamp. Uh, I can't remember the address. <laughs> Just type us in. It, yes, <laughs> if you bar. type it in, you show up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bandcamp and what else? Um, there's a lot of news bits and bats coming up now. So um, we're looking at other little, uh, there's um, some sort of like Facebook, a little new new social media platforms. I can't remember what it's called now. We, me or something like that and, and stuff like that. So we're looking at things like that. They're joining things like that. So we've got so we've got basically everything covered really. But if anybody can, it's, we tend to post a lot quick stuff on Facebook and all the other social media platforms. The website's mainly safe for, you know, it's more like an introduction, really. You've got the bios, you've got videos and music and, and, and things like that, so and press packs and things like that, so prayer photo galleries and things like that. But we're, we're, off, we're very busy on the social media more than anything else. I mean, the website's up to date with all the, and that's got all the shows on as well uh, that we've got coming up from, to, well, the days we've got this, we've got a few dates this year and then um, what's going on next year, so... Yeah. But yep, yeah, we're all over the place. Do you want to share your upcoming gigs? Where can people find you? Yes, Locally, that'd be great. Um, or like in, if, if in person, I'm, socially distanced in person. I don't know, whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, socially distant. Yeah, it's live and socially distanced. It's called. Cool. Um, we're playing on. <coughs> excuse me. We've got um, a, a little gig in our hometown on the sixteenth of October. Um, we're recording that. Uh, 
on video and audio for a, a, a session for a little project that we're working with. Um, that's only uh, going to be a private invite. Uh, that's going to be family and friends. But we do, we will have a few spare places. We're going to do a little competition online, and uh, like a first come first serve sort of thing. But we're going to do all that. Uh, that's the 16th of October. Then we go to the November the 7th, which is Whitehaven. Now that's right across on the Cumbrian coast. <laughs> you probably don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's um, it's a, it's on the northwest, uh, and that's another, another live social distance gig. After that, well, it's in the, in the lap of the gods, really. We do have gigs booked in in Sunderland in the northeast uh, in November. And we have also on the northeast coast at, at Christ, on New Year, we had a, a gig with Roddy Radiation from the Specials playing with us. Um, so hopefully, it's not been cancelled yet. So as it stands, that's all we've got. It's just such a shame because the, the diary was, like I said, was full, you know, right up to... Every weekend, he was. We were all over the place. It was. It was. It was going to be fantastic. We had to cancel gigs in Poland again. We've lost the Irish International Scar Festival. We've lost all that sort of thing. So, I mean, we're trying to remain positive. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. So, any little gig we can get, we will just have to get out and play. Yep, one day at a time for the betterment of all mankind, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, Paul. I have tons more questions and I could keep talking to you for forever. Um, but we are going to let you go so that we can play your music. Thank you. <laughs> and I thank you very much for joining us. I look forward to meeting you, fingers crossed, in June of next year. And yeah. stay positive, happy, healthy, keep making ska music. And in closing, yeah. is there anything you'd like to, to say in your final words, sir? I'd like to say, well, I'd like to say thank you for having us because it helps with the band profiles we were talking and, and, and I really appreciate your time and everything and, everything. and you keep up the good work as well because what you're doing is a good thing. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody stay safe. We will dance together again, you know, that's it. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Have a good evening. And you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. That was Paul from the Scapones which is a UK ska band. And it's awesome that we've got the technology as frustrating as it is and limiting at times uh, to be able to talk to people across the world now, which is very nice. So thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. Kiff and I are gonna take a short break. We're gonna be right back and we're gonna play stuff from their first album as well as some of their singles that they've released throughout uh, this year and so. If you would like to, go grab a drink, go to the bathroom, come back. We'll see you here in just a few short seconds, okay? Thanks. Bye.